morning happy Saturday oh my goodness it's early I woke up super early because I have a long day today thought it would be fun to take you guys with me like a weekend in a life of a Reiki master um, I have a full schedule today of Reiki and raindrop sessions and then I'm also working a fair and doing Reiki at the fair so yeah I thought it would be cool to capture this on camera maybe have a little uh, spiritual chit chat later and just like document my experience and try to like communicate to you guys just what this practice is about what it means to me and just how it helps me in my life so but anyway I just got done with my workout I didn't do much I'm pretty tired I just ran like three miles and did the elliptical it was way too early for me to run this morning so I'm actually gonna try and do my long run uh, tomorrow morning because I am training for a half marathon so three miles is not enough so I need to run seven um, this week to stay on track so but anyway kicking off this vlog right now I'm gonna go home I'm going to shower and get ready and then do my little energy cleansing meditation um, and get my stuff together to go to Sarameda. My first appointment is at 10 right when they open so I don't have very much time to like get the room prepped um, but yeah I need to do that and then get my oils for my raindrop session this afternoon. So yeah, let's get going. just some grounding so I'll do some cypress or um, I usually like to do cedar wood but I don't have any right now it's not really in the kit but I'll put it on the bottoms of my feet um, just because I feel like that helps uh, it actually does help ground so what I'm doing right now besides putting 
the oils on the bottom of my feet. I did a little meditation. I basically cleanse my energy. I make sure that my body feels good, that my mind feels good, that um, I'm clear before stepping in to anybody else's energy field and working on them. Very, very important because whatever energy you're bringing into the session, it's gonna combine with your clients. And it's, uh, you don't want to give them anything negative or something that you might be carrying. And that's why it's so important that whenever you do this work and why it's important of who you choose to be your practitioner, they have to take care of their energy. And that's why they say basically to heal yourself first, use Reiki to heal yourself before healing others, uh, because partly because of this reason. But also in general, when you heal yourself, you're basically shifting your external world and living more in alignment. And so if that is like my path of uh, doing more Reiki and energy work for other people, then that's what is you're gonna do more of in your life. Otherwise it can be other things, you know, that what's more in alignment with your soul, if that makes sense. So I am going to pack my bag. Um, I have to get my crystals and I have my raindrops. I'm gonna get my, this is what I bring, what's in, I should do a video of what's in my Reiki bag. Um, I bring crystals, incense, also my little incense holder here. Uh, I have Palo Santo, I'm out of sage, I need to buy more at the shop. And then I'll probably bring my sound bowl uh, for my heart, for the heart chakra because I have four Reiki sessions today and then I have one raindrop. So yeah, we're, we're booked up today. I, it's, it's really gonna be important for me to ground. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna bring my crystals that I want. It's uh, basically, I'll do a spiritual routine, but I just kind of like did this on the fly because I have to, go so i'm not going to show you everything of what i do but essentially this is my reiki bag um i keep my holy fire book i also teach holy fire um practice it as well and of course my master teacher manuals in there i always carry it with me because it is good vibes and just in case i want to do like a meditation or something with somebody or i want to use some symbols that i can't really remember uh, hang on is the heart chakra. So, sing. Yeah, that was. So you can kind of see. I like to play those uh, at the beginning. I like to play those at the beginning, um, like sound bowls, and I have like these. I'll do those in sessions too as I feel called to do but I love to start sessions with my sound bowl um, and I'm also kind of reading a little bit about tarot I do card pulls every once in a while for clients but I cannot remember the cards so I have to like look up kind of the meaning behind it a little bit but more so like the cards are just like there to channel so you really don't have to know the meaning I just like to so anywho yeah, this is a quick little uh, energy cleanse and me packing up my stuff, getting ready to go. So, but yeah, you saw me take a shower. I have to, when I'm in the shower, I do like a little like cleansing meditation. And w literally when you're washing your body, you're washing away old stagnant energy. So uh, that's why when you get out of the shower, you feel pretty good. Like your brand's making new. But yeah, I'm gonna make a, I had some tea. I'm gonna make a dandy blend latte for the road and we're gonna go. Just kidding, we didn't have time to make a dandy blend latte. I've got to go. It's about a 30 minute drive to Sarah Meta. So we are all packed and ready to rock. So let's get this energy session palooza marathon day started. Oh, and one more thing. As you see me go throughout the day, hopefully I capture it. Watch how my energy changes because once I start giving all these sessions, um, as a practitioner, I also get healing from it. So my energy also gets cleared. And when I say cleared, my chakras also align. So just see if you can notice a difference. <laughs>
my gosh. I did not get a chance to vlog like hardly at all. Um, I literally had back to back to back to back clients uh, with like little to no rest in between besides of just like cleansing myself in the room. So yeah, it was kind of a whirlwind. Um, really, really good sessions though. I, I mean, like time passed by like this. I don't even think I was in this dimension. Um, I, I don't even know what happened, um, but uh, it was, it was good. Everyone had a good experience. Um, my very last session was a Reiki and raindrop session. So we started this session off with doing raindrop. Um, and then I ended the session with her lying, um, on her back and then immediately started Reiki after ending, um, the raindrop up at her head. So it worked out perfectly, but, um, yeah, she was vibing pretty high. I think she wasn't even here. Like she was light and airy. Basically, whenever you get done, um, with like raindrop or Reiki, um, most of the time you feel like you're high on life and you can literally get high on your own vibration. So... Um, it's just, you know, a different kind of a feeling, I guess you could say, but yeah, so my vibration is good. I feel pretty good. My body feels good. Every time I do Reiki or raindrop, especially with the oils, oh, it is so beautiful. It raises your vibration. It makes my body feel good. And even if I'm not the one getting it, I'm working with the oils and it gets in my hands and it's getting in my system immediately feel it working. So, um, yeah, good thing to know if you are a Reiki practitioner, raindrop practitioner, whatever, uh, any kind of healing that you give, you get it and, and receive, get it and return. Yeah. Um, because the energy has to pass through your body. So it's clearing out your chakras before it's even getting to somebody else. So anywho, a little side note, but, um, yeah, I learned, I don't want to say I learned a lot today, but just kind of like really honing in on my skills on reading the energy and just seeing the energy linked between like siblings when I was doing sessions for them because I did siblings on um, basically they were cousins and a mother and um, daughter and just like uh, the relationship how I saw it all linked together energetically was just insane um, but yeah, right now, um, I just got done with the fair. So after my sessions at Sarah Meta, I went and I showed you guys a little clip. I also work at Wellness Collective in Springfield. So I do Reiki and Raindrop there as well on weekends and sometimes during the work week, um, um, in the evenings cause I still work at nine to five. Um, so I went there and basically it's just like a woman's fair and, uh, we just gave out business cards and did like sample Reiki sessions or massage sessions and, um, just did like drawings, like enter in to win prizes and discounts and things like that. So it was nice to like meet new people and then meet the people that I work with cause I just started there. So, um, it was, it was pretty good. I, I really enjoy it. My Reiki master is actually the owner of it. So she started this business. Um, and I'm just really, really fortunate to join in with her. So, or at least work for her and not join in with her. But right now I am actually at my favorite health food store. I need to get some protein powder because I want to make protein waffles for tonight. And I bet my husband, yeah, my husband's calling me and I'm going to get some chocolate because I, it's that time guys. So anyway, let's go. Hi guys, what is up? It is now Monday, February 21st, and it's been a hot minute since Saturday, the last time that I vlogged, but I just took you guys along with me in a weekend, and it was a whirlwind. Let me tell you, I thought I was gonna have time to vlog, but I did not, unfortunately. I just showed you pieces and glimpses of basically back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back clients and jumping from one spiritual wellness center to another because your girl was, my schedule was booked. Um, so, but it was great. I had an amazing weekend. I spent about six hours doing energy work. So my vibration was high. I was extremely high vibing. So a lot of healing went down for a lot of people over the weekend. I was so happy to be part of their journey. And a lot of healing went down for me because hey, you, whatever you put out, you receive in return. So anyway, um, but I wanted to make this video and do a little chit chat about uh, what is Reiki, who could benefit from it, what maybe to expect, uh, especially with this session with me. 
Um, this is something that I go over uh, with all of my clients if they've never been, they've never had a Reiki session before. This is kind of the down low that I give them beforehand. And um, it's important to note that you know, I just give a brief overview of it. I try not to put too much expectation in the client's mind beforehand because I don't want them to think that if they didn't experience something uh, that I've told them about that it was wrong or it didn't work or anything like that. So it, whatever I say to them is just purely informational. My battery's about to die! Ugh! with a fresh new battery. Okay, so just to give a little brief overview, now this is gonna be nothing like hugely in depth um, because I'm gonna try to cover quite a bit of ground and there's not a lot of, this video would be like an hour long if I went into huge detail. So those would be separate videos. But in a nutshell, kind of what I tell my clients is uh, Reiki is a Japanese healing technique uh, with the form of touch basically so what happens is the practitioner taps into reiki energy which is universal god energy it is what the universe is made out of me and you are a part of that and they can tap into it in a meditative state and channel this energy into the client's body and this is just partly science too guys uh, energy flows where intention goes. Um, the practitioner can tap into it and this is also part of it of you have a practitioner who's high vibrational and they take care of their energy and they know how to clear their chakras. They've done the work or, or know how to clear themselves before so they're already very high vibrational and so energy is going to flow from them to somebody who's not as high vibrational that is just the way that science works so the practitioner will tap into reiki energy and channel it to the client now what i like to do before a session um, i will have the client just lay on the table uh, depending on what i kind of feel from their energy i may start the session out with like sound bowls or a little guided meditation to help them relax get them more present in their body because it is hard to get people to shut down the mind um, to fully experience uh, what's going on in the session so the practitioner or myself, I'll just refer to this as myself because this is how I conduct it and this can be done in any way that uh, however the practitioner works best for them. So I'll start out by getting in a meditative state um, and then I usually scan the person's aura or their energetic body and I do this um, because I get Reiki flowing in my own body. I'll get it coming out of my hand chakras and you'll be able to feel it. If you're a practitioner, you're pretty familiar with it. So um, what I do is I put my hand over uh, each chakra and then why? from that, um, I can feel how much pull or not pull um, energy flowing from my hand into the client's body and you can also feel if your hand gets stuck in some places it kind of feels like smudgy I guess you want to say like it gets really kind of hard to pull it uh, your hand and there are points of where you can feel a, like a cool nice little spinning breeze under and that's just a cool flow of energy so you can kind of tell where energy is going to flow in the session just by the scan itself in the very beginning. I do this just to get familiar with the person and also ask permission to work in their energy because they also have to allow it and that's very important as well. Gosh dang this stupid fly or gnat. Person has to allow it and even with their conscious approval of yes they obviously came for the session you are working with that higher person's self oh, regardless if you understand this or not um, your higher self is in contact with their higher self and what's being conducted is really out of both of our conscious minds power so all we are at the point is the practitioner is just basically the messenger and the channel and whatever happens and takes place, whatever messages come through, if anything, it's just all up to the energy and the client's highest good and healing at that point in time on their journey in life. So you can kind of see where this is a little bit more than just holistic healing, I want to say. It's a body, mind, soul 
because everything is connected. Um, so yes, this does involve a little bit of science, but also science is just the explanation or theories of spirituality. So it's what we are. Um, and then it's just your own interpretation of it. So back on track now. After I scan the body, I will then start up at the head, which is the crown chakra. And in Reiki, I, I practice Yusui, um, but I also am trained in Karuna and Holy Fire. But I start at the head and then I work my way down at the feet. So I work through all seven main chakras. I will sometimes do the knees or join and I do hit the feet at the very end so I can really kind of give a good energetic push through the body and then pull them back in and ground them pretty hard. So while I'm working, it's been about three to five minutes in each chakra. When I'm channeling energy, I am in a meditative state. For me, the practitioner, what I experience is just a lot of tingles going through my own body. I can feel the energy moving. I can feel it coming out of my hands um, and transferring into the client. Even if the client doesn't feel anything, I 120% know that there is energy flowing. Like things are taking place. They just can't see it or maybe can't feel it. So as a practitioner, that's kind of what I do uh, while I'm going through each chakra. Sometimes it just depends on um, my own energy, like how tuned in I am, how deep in a meditative state I get, but sometimes I will get visions, sometimes I will get um, mantras on repeat in my head, I'll get knowings. Uh, energy will light up in my own body and body parts and that's kind of a signal to healing that's taking place within the client because they have something maybe physically wrong but I will get usually the feelings that are associated with the client of what they're going through at that point in time now I don't really get too much of background information on it um, I feel like when people come and they're like oh my gosh she's gonna read my energy she's gonna know like it's almost like they walk in and they're like oh I'm naked or something but it's not like that um, there have been times of where I have read people's energy um, when I am conducting this and I'm getting you know, just little bits and pieces of like information of, oh, this girl's going through a breakup. So this explains the, the heart issue or this person, their significant other is dying. And this it like, I just get little hints, but there's no great deal of explanation of what's going on or what, how, um, like the drama in your life per se. So, um, I just get some feelings and, so another example would be um, somebody with high anxiety. I will feel that anxiousness and where it's stored at in your body, chakra. So I'll be able to feel it in my own body and then that kind of gives me insight to how I can help you post session as well because it's not just for me and it's just different between practitioner. Um, if I do get messages, if I do have these feelings or whatever, cause it's not every session this happens. Um, sometimes it's, you know, barely any messages or anything like that. But on the times where I do get these feelings and I do um, get messages or visions or I see energy coming unblocked, I will tell the client at the end of the session, um, as long as I understand that it's for their greatest healing for them. And the only reason I know I receive these messages is because it is. I set that intention before starting. So I only get healing messages for the client. While I'm doing that, working through each chakra, some of those things may be happening for me um, as I'm conducting the session and the client can probably expect and every session is different there our bodies are so different not one person has the same energetic blueprint not one life journey is the same we are so unique and that's what makes this so beautiful is that each session is uniquely designed for that person in that specific time period wherever they're at in their journey of life it that session was designed for them to move forward and heal so that I can't control anything of what happens basically each session it's just so different each time so client as I'm working through they may experience just uh, deep relaxation 
which is what I usually tell people that they will experience because almost everybody that I've ever had do a Reiki session will say that they were able to relax. They feel like they got like, you know, really deep restful sleep, which it's true because 20 minutes worth of Reiki is worth two hours of deep restorative healing sleep. So you actually, your body goes through a, a deep healing. Reiki actually works in the physical body up to 48 hours after the session. But uh, as it's clearing out energy, the clients may actually have emotions that pop up because emotions are energy in motion. It's just becoming unstuck and that was just in that point of time, they were ready to let it go. And so it will come to surface and I've had people cry, I've had people laugh. It's just for a brief moment and then it's gone and they're very kind of taken back like they can't believe they did it. And, that, and it's happened to me even, I've cried in a session and for no reason um, of what I understood, it was just emotions coming up. And uh, another thing that can come up are just memories and it's all symbolic of your healing at that point in time. So you can have emotions, you can have memories come up, you can, ha you can actually sometimes feel, I'll get clients that actually feel the energy um, passing through them and shifting in their body. And it kind of takes them back because they just are like, oh, this person's just gonna channel energy in me and I'm just gonna get it, you know? And they don't really know what to expect, is, which is good because I don't want them to have expectations on it because then if you do, you end up blocking whatever potential healing that could happen. You put too much expectation on it. So I'll have clients feel the energy for the first time and they're just taken back by it and they're like, wow, I just I did not know. And I'm like, yes, it's actually, you can see it happening. If you can, if you're one of those uh, clear, clear, I can't remember, one of the clairs, it's not buoyant, but if you're the type of um, psychic that can see the energy flowing, you can see sometimes it coming, like literally spewing out of their body of just waves of energy just almost like overflowing like a fountain coming out of them and that's how i know too that energy has become unblocked i'll feel it in my own body shift because when i'm stepping into their energy when i'm conducting the session our auras are intertwined so we almost we share we kind of become like a little mixing um and that's why it's really important to pick your practitioners wisely Anyway, so sometimes they'll feel the energy moving. Sometimes it will be intense vibration, tingles, heat. You'll feel just like very fluid, almost like water washing over you. Um, I've had people feel like they were out in the ocean on waves. That is just the energy flowing through your body. It's very healing, very normal. I've had people see colors before and that's also uh, another normal thing. I'll see colors as well, uh, usually associated with the chakras, and um, that kind of lets me know what also is where energy is heal, like flowing per se. But I can have clients have actual visions themselves, uh, like symbols coming up. That's the universe, your higher self communicating with you. It may not make sense, but usually down the road it does make sense for them. So, and that's another part of it too. After the session, the most healing probably takes place mentally and emotionally. But yeah, so I'll work my way down each chakra and I will end at the feet, ground the client, and then once I am done, I will, maybe I will sometimes pull out my Indian drum if I really feel like the client needs to be grounded. I'll pull out tuning forks and maybe do some extra work in some chakras or I might bring out some crystals, place them on the client and actually just let the crystals do a little bit of extra work while I maybe do some more Reiki on it or pull out um, singing bowls or things like that. So I usually, that's how I kind of wrap up my sessions, just however else I feel called to do. And then I make sure to brush their aura and seal in the session when I'm done. Um, and I forgot to tell too, whenever I'm conducting the session, I being, you know, a Reiki practitioner, I have all my symbols. I, and not just Yusui, each uh, level of Reiki that you do, you get new symbols. So I use my Karuna, I use my Holy Fire, I use just my Yusui's level one through master. And I will do it as I feel called to, um, because each symbol represents a different frequency of healing 
for a certain emotion or what the client is going through. So I will do draw these symbols in my mind's third eye. I will repeat them in my head in certain sequences as I work through each chakra. So there's that aspect of it as well. But um, at the end, I brush their aura and I cut our energetic ties off. And this is so important, so important because it is whenever you're working with a client and it's not even just with Reiki, it's any kind of energetic work and you're really exposed to these forces and you're opening up, allowing somebody to step in and you're essentially doing the same being a practitioner you can take and intertwine energies. You can take stuff from some people and if you yourself aren't clear, they can take things from you. And so that's why it's super important to cut the, the energetic link between you um, and clear yourself when you're done. Don't, oh gosh, have to ground and clear yourself when you're done after every session. Sage yourself, cleanse yourself, Say a prayer, get the the your energy back, claim your own energy back. Um, because it is extremely easy to take on somebody else's energy, especially if you yourself are very high vib vibrational, it's gonna cling to you. Especially if it's a lower type of energy and I could get into a whole other mess about this of there's no such thing as like lower vibrational energy if you get into the 5D realms and stuff. But guys, when you're working with people who have lower vibrational energies, they believe it and they feel it. They're experiencing depression, anxiety, and we all do. We all are... We're so interdimensional, we can shift like that, but somebody who's stuck in a low vibration that can't get out of it, it's so easy to take that on and be brought back down. So you have to be able to cleanse yourself, let it go, and get back to your high vibration. Um, doesn't happen every time, but it can, and it's very easy to do. So I will cut the cord, and then when I'm done, I usually help the client up because they're a little kind of spacey, um, and then we go over the session. So essentially what has happened when you're channeling in energy, it's clearing out each chakra and it's allowing the client self soul or whatever you want to, uh, call it channel more in. So when you're pumping that Reiki energy in the God universal energy, it's very healing and it's allowing the person to become their fullest self as it's clearing out these lower vibrations. Uh, that are no longer serving uh, the person. As this happens in the session, the person may feel different. Uh, they can't really pinpoint it when they're done, but they'll kind of get up and just feel a little like shift or off. Uh, not always a bad thing. Sometimes people do get a little sick and it's just because of the frequency. So basically you walk in as one vibration of what you've been used to for who knows how long. Um, and then you're gonna leave a different vibration that's not too, you're not familiar with. So that shift in energy, your physical body actually has to catch up to that new vibration and change. So it can have some kind of flu-like symptoms. Um, this happens to me quite a bit when either I run the energy a lot, it happened to me a lot in the beginning when I was first practicing because my body wasn't used to having so much energy run through me. Um, but also after every Reiki attunement, I always go through some form of uh, a physical sickness. So, but, and it gets better, but it's just flu-like symptoms. Anywho, getting off topic now. Make sure your client is okay. Uh, this is completely normal if they feel a little spacey, if they feel extremely tired, um, or sometimes they are really energetic and they're happy and their mood just lifts like something has been lifted pretty much, uh, whatever vibration. So uh, after that is happening is the energy is clearing out from their chakras. They're able to live more in alignment with their soul and their highest self. Um, so they're happier, they feel better physically, they might feel better, but um, all healing is controlled by the energy. The practitioner can't heal you for a certain thing. So if you're coming in with depression and you're just like, we can set the intention to heal the depression or 
you know, you can set intentions before Reiki um, to help, but it doesn't always mean that it's going to be that way because if you're not energetically ready to let go of something or that's not the next step on your journey to heal, then whatever is the next step is gonna happen. So a lot of people may come and really want their illness healed or something serious like that. And it may take session after session after session um, because they're not ready to heal on a body level for, you know, it, they may have to heal more on a mental and emotional, um, energetic level first before you can actually heal the physical body. So each chakra is connected to a certain emotion and a certain body part and a certain life challenge. So this is where it is a body, mind, soul healing and why the human body is so fascinating. It's one of the most beautiful tools to learn about life is through the human body and disease and emotions. Um, so basically, whatever you're trying to heal, say it be, you know, your root chakra, you have a lot of anxiety, you're never grounded, you're always in your mind. Um, this can cause a lot of hip pain, cause lower back pain, cause lower knee joint pain, um, anything like hemorrhoids, things like that. That's everything associated with the root chakra. Well, certain emotions behind this as well are things like fear, anxiety, not feeling safe and secure in your body, in your surroundings, like um, at your home, so your finances, your job, sec feeling secure and feeling accepted in a tribe, so like things like family or like community. So that ties in with the root chakra as well. So people will come and try to not only get channeled energy into their body, but it also gives them insight on things that they can work on outside of just the session itself. So once a practitioner can relay this information to them, now you have the power and the knowledge of what is going on in your body, which you already really did know, but you just, you just think you don't know. So now you have this information and you can go make changes in your life to help heal your body. So, um, or your mind or whatever you're trying, the depression, the anxiety, whatever it may be. Um, that's another aspect of Reiki that's extremely healing and why it's so important of who you choose as your practitioner. I do not believe you should ever just go in and get a session and walk up and leave. You have to have the knowledge behind the session itself. Your practitioner should tell you these things. But, um, but yeah, I'm not gonna go through every chakra. That is a whole nother video in itself. But that is essentially uh, what happens, how I conduct my Reiki sessions. Those are things that have happened, that can happen, um, and it's infinite. The, the possibilities of a session are honestly infinite. Uh, I never put any expectations behind the energy because I, that will just shut it off um, to what the universe may offer up, at, you know, an, a lovely experience um, in a session. I don't want to ever block that. So. I just kind of set the intention to um, have this session be conducted for the client's highest healing and good, and that's exactly what happens every time. So that is kind of what Reiki is. I think I covered everything that I wanted to. Now, raindrop, that is another form of energetic healing. I should probably do a whole nother separate video on that, but I also practiced raindrop, and you saw a session, or me preparing for a session on that. So it's basically Young Living has developed this technique, it's called the Raindrop Technique. It's not massage, uh, but it's similar qualities to it in the way that the you use essential oils and you massage them. I don't want to say massage. You use a certain touch technique on the bottoms of the feet. They're like spinal points, so you know the bottoms of your feet, they're tied to like different um, body parts. So you're literally absorbing all these like really healing, just beautifully vibrational oils um, into your body's meridian system. And it works through your physical body for at least uh, one to two weeks. 
so you'll get you'll be pretty high vibing especially after the session but um so i think there's like i can't remember 12 different oils so i'll work on the bottoms of the feet and then i have the client flip over on their stomachs and then you drop the oils a certain way along the spine and then you do like a feather and a fanning technique to kind of get it spread out into their system and then you do um, for each oil it has like a little touch technique of how it needs to be worked into the body and this you know this is where it kind of feels like massage but it's not really a massage but um and then there's like uh I do, I, I don't know if this, this isn't Young's Living's technique, but just because I'm a Reiki master, um, I do an, a little energy cleanse as I'm doing the session and a release at the end. So um, I like to put a hot towel on the client's back just so it opens up the pores and it really gets the oils in there really nice. And then I will release some energy. Uh, we'll do like a little kind of like 30 second I talk them through it um, and then we release it and then I have them end on their backs flipping back over and I will work their uh, shoulders a little bit and then a little bit in the back of the neck I will have I will hold my hands over their clothes so they can I put some uh, I think it's white angelica and so they can inhale it get it into their system Sometimes I like to do Reiki and Raindrop in the same session. I'll offer like deals and stuff like that. Too. So like if you want a Reiki session and a Raindrop session, you can get them both done at the same time. So, um, and if so, if they did that, I will then start Reiki at the head and then work my way down just like I would in a normal session. Um, yes, the, the, your shirt is off, but you are covered up. So if the client is fine with it, then we won't pause and they don't have to get dressed again and we just keep going with this session. So it's about an hour and a half to do both. Um, Raindrop is usually just an hour, but you can do Reiki for you know 30 minutes to an hour. I usually don't put a time limit on it unless I have scheduled back to back to backs like I did. Um, but I usually just try to work the energy about 30 minutes and actual energy work with the client for 30 minutes. And then we do kind of like a post session, which usually takes about 10. Sometimes it turns into a therapy session. And if I don't have anybody else, I will just keep going. Um, and that is extremely healing as well for the client because they're actually, if they're, if sometimes they don't feel like opening up, but sometimes they do. And so it does turn into a therapy session if they feel comfortable enough to talk about it. It's so healing and you know, I've had clients cry. I, you know, I've hear, heard life stories and I'm able to give a perspective on it and just uh, um, at this point, somebody to talk to. And I don't think anybody realizes how healing that is, especially after you've just received energy work, um, you need this. So, that is also part of the session, or it should be, if um, I don't think a practitioner should ever try to shove somebody out the door, uh, unless their schedule's booked in. They should probably voice that beforehand. So that is just kind of like how I like to conduct my session. I love, I love my sessions. I, I love my clients. Um, oh yeah, I did forget to say, um, go over the post session as far as like what the client should expect. So make sure you have them drink a lot of water. Reiki does dehydrate the body and it flushes out toxins from the system. So drinking a lot of water. And then I have the person really examine what goes on in their life. Um, this is where a little bit of the spirituality comes into play because our vibration attracts our life pretty much. We're, as we're going out through life, we are creating. And so we are creating based off of our vibration and what is given to us and what we're thinking, our thoughts and our emotions. No matter what in life, life is always an abundance of everything. Think about that, okay? So if you have on repeat in your head, you have this vibration of just a bad outlook, you're depressed, you're anxious, whatever, that's what you're gonna receive more of and you're gonna see that in every aspect of your life. This is where the mind work is so important to shift your thinking because you're creating your reality. 
So when you have a new vibration from Reiki, and this is how it's a tool because it has pumped you with new vibration, healing high vibration, it has cleared out your chakras, you're going to vibe higher. So things in your life may look a little bit different, may feel a little bit different. You're going to maybe get some signs of where you're out of alignment in your current life of things that maybe no longer agree with you or things that are starting to bother you that didn't before some examples i give or maybe just you know drinking alcohol you may kind of feel a little like not good about it or the way that you eat um people who change like their vibration or something they tend to try to be healthier all around and this is kind of just a side effect of it um, and also the people in your life, you may start to realize of who really brings you down or who really adds to you as a person. So honestly, like post Reiki session can be one of the best. It is actually one of the best, um, things that could ever happen for you, even if the outcome isn't always how do I want to say, I don't want to say favorable because everything happens for your highest good, but sometimes it can seem like things fall apart before they get better. And this is just the things that, that has to happen because you built a life on a um, faulty foundation pretty much. So things have to fall away before new energy can come in and really amplify your life. So that's why it is so important between the Reiki session and I would say about like 21 days to a month, really examine your life, your thoughts, your emotions. This is the time to do the deep healing work. Um, time to self reflect. If that means going internally and just shutting out the world for a bit, that's what you gotta do. And, you know, I've been through it, I still go through it. It's gonna be a never, it, the healing journey is gonna be an always the forever thing that's just what life is and all that you do as you go through you just learn how to get better and better and better at shifting your perspectives and understanding yourself more of what you can allow or of what you should allow in your life or what agrees with you and what doesn't and you just get stronger as a person of not you know um, standing your ground and being true to yourself and once you do this once you live in alignment with yourself and stop living for other people or um, living a life of what you think you know you, look, you should live as far as what society deems is right by us if that's not in agreement with you it is okay you know, once you start living in alignment with yourself, you're going to be the happiest that you've ever been, even if it's a 360 flip of what you thought life should have been like, you know. Um, so just allow things to happen and unravel. And it doesn't mean your whole life has to fall apart in like a month. You know, take the baby steps, you know, take the signs. Um and move move with it you know work with the energy let it show you things in life let it show you where you're out of balance at ask for help because you will receive help you know we always get what we ask for if it's too much ask to, for it to back off just a little bit you just need some grace right now you know it's beautiful all of it it's just life and it's the most precious gift we could ever have received of just being here and just, this is why I love Reiki so much. Uh, it has taught me all these things. And even though that I'm not perfect and I still struggle, um, I, I know how to bring myself back. And Reiki has been the way that I was able to do it and I know it can help other people do it too. Um, you just have to keep learning and working with the energy and I say energy it's God it's you know you work with angels cinema masters spirit guides it's all the same thing it's all the same thing guys it's all the energy it's just different frequencies of it so it evokes different emotions different powers behind each one so maybe got a little bit off topic at the end um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope uh, it gave you a little bit more of an insight of what Reiki is, what you can maybe expect, just a little bit of my experience of working with the energy and how much I love it and adds to my own life as well. 
um, hopefully I've convinced you to maybe give it a session a shot. Um, it doesn't, the inner energy work doesn't even have to be Reiki, it's a tarot, it's journaling, it's meditation. Um, meditation is huge guys, you should really meditate. But um, all of those things are so healing, so healing and they're all, uh, they all strengthen the, the communication of, with yourself, with the subconscious, with your soul, with God, it's all connected, it's all the same thing. So, we'll see how many people I pissed off with that one. But anyway, guys, uh, I really appreciate you watching this video if you're still sticking around. And uh, hopefully, um, I can make more content that will help you guys out. So, but for now, I'm sending you all my good vibes. And I'll see you later.